What's up guys, Evil Deer here, your god, and tonight I'm going to cover two questions which I received from one of my viewers. Now, I've already individually responded to him, but I figured the questions were interesting and why not share them with everyone? Perhaps this will help someone who's learning Esperanto. Now, this video is in English because it's really only suitable for people who are learning Esperanto. For the Esperantists who watch my channel, please just wait until tomorrow. So, what are the questions? First up, what flashcard program do you use and how should I use mine? And two, when will I be fluent and how do I reach fluency? So first up, my flashcard program. So I'm just going to show it to you here. As you can see, I use a very basic flashcard program, but really you can just use any. This is called Memo Sync or Memo Sign or I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever. Someone will figure it out, I don't care. So yeah, it's a simple download, you can put it on any computer, it doesn't make any registry changes, it's nice and simple. So, what I'm going to say about flashcard programs, okay, is they're awesome when you're first learning the language. They help you to embed words that you're learning in maths, okay? Now, what I'm going to say though, is a lot of people kind of, with flashcard programs, stick individual words in there. Now, although that's kind of good, in a sense, Try and focus on putting words in context, so in sentences themselves. Now, there's several reasons for this. When you learn a word by itself, it's very hard to associate it with a concept. It's easy to associate it with an English word, but with an actual concept and how it's used. So, for instance, verbs are all used in certain ways. They're either transitive, intransitive, they um, attach to certain um, adverbs and stuff like that, you know, they use certain pro, uh, pronouns or um, post propositions, stuff like that. They, they're all used in certain ways in every language, even in Esperanto, okay. So the best way to learn any word is actually in context. So if you're going to use a flashcard program, put it in context. Now, a second benefit of this is that you actually learn a whole heap of words at one time with one card because they're all in context and it has to be more than one word. Now, there's a third bonus to this, is that there's going to be a lot of crossing between the different cards. And this forces you to learn all the different words from all the different angles the word could be used, okay? Um, in all the different, like, nuanced environments. So if you're going to use a flashcard program, which I recommend when you first start with Esperanto, or any language, put sentences in. Don't put individual words in unless you have to and you can't figure out how it would exist in the sentence, but it's best to put it in the sentence and if you can't figure out a sentence, well then probably don't put it in there in the first place. Now, another thing I'm going to say is as soon as you can, get rid of the flashcard program. I haven't used flashcard programs for a long time. Now, the reason behind this is because flashcard programs are good for getting a massive amount of vocab in, but... They're not good for really adapting yourself to the language, and this will lead into the second thing, fluency. Um, for instance, you're gonna there's gonna be a lot of sentences, and I used to do this. I'd put tons of sentences in there, very handy for getting yourself off the ground. However, there's a limitation. You cannot cover everything. You cannot cover every concept, every nuance to a word. You go look up a word in the dictionary. I guarantee you, there's ways that word is used within the language, even in Esperanto, which aren't in that dictionary, okay? Words evolve with the language. There's, for instance, a word might be used in a certain context in everyday life, but in science it has a different meaning. In religion it has a different meaning yet again, or at least a different nuance to the meaning, and a different way it's used, okay? So, what I'm going to say is get rid of the flashcard program as soon as you can, and start reading, listening to music, speaking, and writing, okay? Because that is the only way you're going to start learning the language completely and with every type of nuance and how it's actually put together, okay? And that's where it will lead into fluency as well. Now, so basically, flashcard programs are good. Use sentences, dump it as soon as you can. Now, I'm going to move into the second point, which was, why am I not yet fluent and how do I reach it? So this question came from someone who almost completed their Duolingo tree and they felt that they weren't fluent yet. And I'm just going to say right up, you're already fluent to a degree. Now, fluency is a very ambiguous word or idea, okay? So what is it generally? What do people mean by fluency? They mean that you're able to express yourself in the language and understand, obviously, other things in the language without pretty much any interruption, okay? Now, you can be fluent about everyday concepts, but that doesn't mean you're fluent about religious concepts. That doesn't mean you're fluent about... Um, you know, concepts that only doctors would care about or programmers would care about. In all honesty, there's a lot of things I'm not fluent about, even in English. Um, I can't discuss, you know, doctor's jargon in English. 
And you might say, well, that's not really fluency, that's just specialized language, but technically it's, it's still a part of fluency, isn't it? See, fluency is so ambiguous, there's no end to it. Literally, I reckon if I grabbed an English dictionary, there'd probably be a good 30% of the words in there. I just don't know. So what is fluency? I would say that fluency is being competent, um, able to speak without too many problems and understand without too many problems, everyday topics, okay? And things that interest you, or at least interest the general population. So, are you fluent yet at the end of the Duolingo tree? No, I'd say you're about middle level, okay? There's a lot of things that you will still be translating in your head and you don't have fully embedded yet, but you're already becoming fluent in certain things. So let me explain what I mean by this. So imagine that you've got a piece of paper, okay? It's a very large piece of paper. And on it is written every single word and concept of the entire language, the entire language of Esperanto. I know that's impossible. Just imagine, okay? And right in the middle is the first words that you learn. Saluton, which means hello. Um, Kiel vi fartas, you know, how are you doing type of thing. And from there stretches out to conversational topics and then stretches out further into like science, religion, politics, and stretches out even further into just like random topics like programming or, you know, on, or, you know, wiki based language and stuff like that. So when you first learn a language, You've got this piece of paper, okay, and imagine that you're holding it above a bucket of water and the bucket of water is your full understanding, full fluency. And you dip the water literally on the word hello. And what happens from there? It starts growing out. It soaks outwards, okay. That's what happens with fluency. You start with one concept and you fully understand that concept. If I say saluton to you now, and you're even a couple of lines into the Duolingo tree, you know what that word means off the top of your head. You don't have to translate it in your head in English. So that literally means you're fluent in that one word and concept, okay? Fluency is just that on a massive scale. So as you progress through the Duolingo tree, you'll become fluent at more and more concepts. You're not fluent in the entire language, but you're beginning to become better and better at different concepts. But there's a certain stages to fluency. First, there is recognition of the word, okay? But you still need to translate it to fully understand it. Next comes the, the point where you know what it means, but you might not know how to use it in, say, every context. And then from there becomes complete and utter freedom of using the word, okay? And knowing what it means on site without any form of translation. Sometimes you might not even know the English equivalent, which is what's going to happen when you get further in Desperano. There's a lot of words you just can't back translate into English and means you're gonna to have to jump over that barrier. So, with that piece of paper again, you've dipped it in water, you've learned hello, you're fluent in that, it spreads out. You've now learned all the everyday concepts about the weather, about you know talking to people, about meetings and stuff like that. And then from there, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna spread in all sorts of random directions and you're gonna become fluent in different topics based on your interests. If you're really interested in, say, gardening, and you read a lot about gardening and you start reading a lot about gardening in Esperanto and talking about gardening with your friends who like to garden in Esperanto, you're going to become really fluent at gardening conversation. But that doesn't mean you're going to be fluent at, you know, religion and stuff like that. So fluency is not just something where you just boom, wake up one day and go, oh my God, I can speak everything. I'm awesome. It doesn't work like that. It's a gradual process of where you slowly spread through the language and even myself. I am not fluent in everything in Esperanto. There's a lot of concepts I cannot discuss. Um, and that's why I do, for instance, my science videos. I like to go read about these science topics in Esperanto so that I will learn these words and concepts. Now, this links back to, into the flashcard program. Once you start focusing on using the language, reading in it, listening to it, um, speaking in it, you're going to start embedding all these concepts in how they're meant to be used in everyday conversation. And you won't need flashcard programs anymore. But this is where a little bit of people get hit with withdrawal. They'll have these massive, massive flashcard lists and they'll be like, Oh my god, I can't dump my flashcard program. There's so many words in it. What happens if I start forgetting them? Which is going to happen because I'm not repeating every single word. Well, you're going to forget words. That just happens, okay? But it's like with English. I learned tons of concepts when I was back in school, which... I guarantee you right now, I don't know the words for um, certain things about mathematics, certain things about science, because I just don't discuss those concepts anymore. What will happen is you will start to learn and embed words that you actually need and use. And eventually, even those really 
rarely used words because you'll start to encounter them, say, once every couple of months in a book, will start to embed as well. So it's basically a gradual process. So the entire idea behind this video is use flashcard programs. They're good at the beginning. Um, stick with sentences. Sentences help in context. Dump that bloody flashcard program as soon as possible. Start reading, listening to music and watching videos. There's plenty of videos in Esperanto, not just my own. There's speeches here on YouTube. There's um, children's shows. Children's shows. Watch them. They are awesome for very basic everyday vocab. Funnily enough, a lot of Esperanto courses will teach you international politics before they teach you how to go down the shop and order a pie. So yeah, just interesting um, little side thing there. So that's it. If you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video. And if you're not there, I will create a flashcard program and I'll list your entire family members in there and I'll memorize their faces so that I can find them in the street. <laughs> And as always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters because honestly, without them, this channel couldn't exist. And you too can help if you want. There's a link down in the description to Patreon. Dollar a month is all I need. So, my Patreon supporters are Andre Temp, Boncotta Comensanto, Chris Perdue, Craig Robertson, GB Ante, Jacob High Bad Pep, James Harler, Jay Z Knuckles, Ludisto, Lupe, Margarita Kilpak, Robert Nielsen, Robert Port, Sarah SC, Shane Power, Tommy Lindsley, Andy Martinez, and you know who.